Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we will discuss about Azure DevOps pipelines. So far in our playlist, we have discussed about Azure DevOps project, organizations, Azure DevOps boards, and the repositories. Now, as we have some idea about the repositories and we know how do we manage our source code onto those repository, next thing we would like to know, learn is how do we deploy that particular source code into our target environment. Let's say if our target environment is Azure subscription and if we have our project resources created into the Azure, then we would like to deploy our application source code from the Git repository to Azure subscription. How do we automate the deployment of our application source code? For that, we are going to use Azure DevOps pipeline. Hi, my name is Rakesh Suryavanshi and you are watching Be Your Learner. So let's first of all understand the, con uh, the concept of the pipeline here with this dashboard. So let's say we have a .NET application and this .NET application is source code is managed through Azure DevOps, Azure DevOps repo. So we have our Azure DevOps repository. And now there is a team of developers who are working on, let's say dev one, dev two. So there are a team of developers working on the .NET application source code. That's our project. And they are contributing to this particular repository. Let's say into the main branch. So obviously these teams are working on a feature branch and they want to push the code into the main branch. And they, the way they push the source code into the main branch, they use the pull request feature, which we discussed in the last video. So with the help of pull request, we merge the code from the feature branch to the main branch. Okay. Now th there are some scenarios, let's say if I'm a developer or an inexperienced developer and code is a little bit complicated for me or knowingly, unknowingly, I'm I basically checked in the source code or created a pull request which has some compilable issue or compile time issues. And if I raise a pull request, then maybe I'm merging the source code which has a compilable issue or compile time issue into main branch. And now from this main branch, if somebody is going to deploy the source code to the environment, let's say Azure environment, then obviously at the time of the deployment, I'll get an error. And then only I'll get to know that, that some XYZ user has merged the code which has compilable issues. And that's going to be a very low yet to, to troubleshoot the issue because on top of that, maybe there are some more additional developers might have merged the source code and then now it's really difficult to pinpoint or figure out the exact issue. That's one of the scenario and we would like to avoid this kind of issues happening into our application source code. So our very first objective, which we want to do is make sure that the application source code, which we are merging, it's always compilable. Okay. So that's our very main, first and main objective that whenever somebody is merging the code, our source code is in a compilable stage. Now, the second thing, what developers are doing with the application source code, they are working on a test driven development with the .NET application. It means that they write the unit test case first and then they write the functionality according to that particular unit test cases. With that, the objective here is for the developer is to make sure that they are following or achieving certain code coverage for the application. It means that each and every method should have the unit test cases and that unit test cases refers to some code coverage and we should match the code coverage guideline received from the client. For example, if client expected to achieve the source code coverage of 290%, then we need to make sure that developers are writing the enough number of unit test cases to cover the source code which they have written. That's one of the objective of the test driven development. With that objective, we not only want to make sure that what is the code coverage which we have with the current code which we are merging, but we would also want to make sure that the 
code which is being changed by some developer the code that particular code is not breaking any unit test cases so that's our second objective so that's object number two object number one so here we would like to make sure our unit test cases are not broken so it's not only about the compilation of the source code but it's also about the making sure that the unit test cases are not broken and we have the code coverage available okay. we would like to match or achieve the both the objective when every time when somebody merge the source code it means that we want to achieve this goal continuously whenever somebody merge the code or whenever somebody integrate the source code from source branch to the master branch so that is the objective of continuous integration okay or in other words we are calling ci sometimes it's also called continuous test because we are continuously testing our source code or the unit test cases just to make sure that we do not have any test cases which are broken or we are we are making sure that what is our code quality coverage with those unit test cases so these are the two objective which we would like to achieve now let's discuss our third objective which is objective three let's say we have compiled our source code run the test case and then merge the source code to the master branch and now from this master or main branch we would like to make sure that whenever source code merged into the main branch our code is getting deployed into the test environment and for that what we can do is we can run another pipeline or let's say CI pipeline or a pipeline which will continuously build the source code it will generate the out, output which is called the artifacts so the compilable out, output is called the artifacts and that artifact which we want to deploy into these environments so let's say if we have generated an artifact from this my main branch after the compilation we want to deploy that artifact into the test environment and then subsequently we can deploy into UAT and if it is user acceptance is passed functionally then we may, we may want to deploy this into production environment as well now remember here in this process we are compiling once and then deploying into the respective environment altogether this way we would like to make sure that the same copy of the artifact we getting deployed all the across all the environments and then whoever is testing on this environment they have the same source of truth available and deployed onto the respective environment that is one of the objective of the continuous deployment so that is called the process itself is called continuous deployment or you call it as a CD so if you look at now we have discussed continuous integration to compile the source code continuously whenever somebody merge try to merge the source code from the feature branch to the master branch continuous test to test the source code after successfully compilation just to achieve the code coverage and to make sure that the core unit test cases are not failing it's passing it the way it is expected and at the last we have a goal to deploy the source code from our main branch to the respective environments and that's what the three objective which we can achieve with the help of pipelines or azure devops pipelines with azure devops we have two different ways to set up the pipeline one is the classical way and there is a yaml a source code pipeline as a source code which is called pipeline as a code which you configure it through the yaml language okay with classical approach you have the user interface available with azure devops pipeline which you can use the user interface to configure the 
continuous integration and then you also have the tools available to set up your continuous deployment which is your CD part. Continuous integration with UI based tools are set up with the pipeline menu. So there is a menu link available with Azure DevOps which helps you to set up the continuous integration with the user interface. And then you have the release menu item which has the user interface available to set up the continuous deployment. Whereas here with the YAML based approach, you write your pipeline as the YAML steps. So YAML is the language which you can use to set up your pipeline stages or the pipeline configurations to deploy or to set up your CI, CT and CD all together in the same YAML file or it could be in a different YAML file. That is what we are going to discuss in this video now. Now we'll move to the Azure DevOps project and try to understand the classical approach in this part of the video.